Hi everybody and welcome to our Scratch Quick Start video. So let's start right away and create a new project by clicking into this field and call this Quick Start Project. Click Add to add it to the list. And to the left you can see we have some settings here. And those are the user settings which mainly determine the look and feel of Scratch and are tied to your Scratch user which you can select or create in this menu. Next we have project settings. Most important your media folder which is your primary media folder but of course you can import footage from any location on your machine and you have default media settings. So anytime you create a new timeline it will have those settings here. You can change those settings at any time and also the settings of an existing timeline. Next we have system settings so here you can determine your SDI output and also you can select your grading panel of choice to work with Scratch. Okay back to the session tab and let's enter into the project. Now inside a project Scratch is divided up into two departments the construct and the player. Currently we're looking at the construct and in the construct you can do media loading or conforming or outputting or media asset management. So you can create multiple constructs or timelines so to speak and you can load footage into it. So let's quickly load some red material here. By the way these are all the formats that you can load into Scratch and now we have a couple of red shots here. As you can see the construct view is kind of like a storyboard view. You can see all those clips one after another um, and if you swipe to the left you can see those versions and timeline labels. So each clip is placed one after another but versions of each clip, which I'll show you later, are stacked vertically. Okay, what else? Uh, we can import all kinds of EDLs, ALEs, AEFs, XMLs to do conforming and we can also go to the outputs menu and have here our timeline presented as a node and export our work. Now for the other department in Scratch, the player. You can enter the player in two ways, either by clicking the play button on a clip and then you would have entered the player with that single clip or by clicking the play button below the thumbnails and that way you would enter the player in a timeline context. So this way we can watch all the clips that are in our timeline. Okay, so the player has four sub-modules. First one is the player, which you can use to play back your footage or play out to a deck if you have SDI options installed. The next sub-module is the process menu, which contains basic settings about our clip, like aspect, like frame rate. And also we have an edit menu, which you can use to, well, edit your footage. Uh, the edit menu has several sub-menus, to be used and we have the matrix. Now the matrix is the place where you can do your color grading and compositing. So you of course have your primaries, you have all kinds of layers that you can create here in the layer menu which you can bring up by swiping to the left or clicking this button. You also have in the sub menus of the matrix all kinds of curves. You also have masking tools like so and of course all kinds of keys available. Okay, so let me quickly delete this grading. If you swipe to the right you can bring up the versions menu. So as I mentioned versions will get stacked vertically so if I now add a version I have another clip here can make this very red. Can add another version go to numeric menu some green to it to make it more yellow. Have another version, reset that and turn down the saturation. Important to know is that the version that gets rendered out is the one at the bottom. So if you want the red version to be rendered out, grab it and drop it below. If you click the statistics button, you will see a couple of waveforms and histogram, vector scopes and the likes. Okay. So let's assume we have graded all of our timeline here and can go back to the construct. Once done with our work we would go to the outputs menu and here we have our output node and we can attach multiple other output nodes like a QuickTime export or 
an Avid MXF export node to it, add those to the render queue, or process directly from this menu, go to the render queue and fire off that render queue. And now you can see here's the render process going on. We can close the render queue, add other constructs and continue working on other projects. All right, that's it for a quick tour through the Scratch UI. Hope this was useful to you and see you next time. Bye.